Hi, I'm Ye Kai Wang. I'm going to talk about the convex body as a parametric conjecture in the plane. My talk has uh, three lectures. The first one is on isoparametric inequality based on the survey of uh, Robert Osserman. The In the second one, I'll tell you the statement of the convex body as a parametric conjecture and uh, what is known and what our new results are. And I'll also talk about some background material needed to investigate this conjecture. In the third lecture, I sketch the proof of our new results. And if you're interested in, in it, you can find the, our paper on the archive. Okay. Let's start. The um, isoparametric, classical isometric parametric problem is due to the legend of Dido. Dido was the princess of the ancient Phoenician city-state of Tyre. After her father died, she inherited the throne and ruled the country with her elder brother. Her brother was quite um, ambitious. He killed uh, Dido's husband, and Dido uh, was forced to exile to North Africa. Here's a map showing the... Um, the trip, um, Tyre is in today's um, Lebanon, and she arrived at today's uh, Tunisia. And the princess must be cute. She, she obtained a grant from the native chief Hyrbus of as much land as she could enclose with an oxide. Imagine you have a piece of fur, you can cover the land, and the land is yours. So this is a real estate problem. But the smart princess cuts the oxide into an exceedingly long strip, and the problem becomes a mathematical one. What is the maximum of area that can be enclosed by a closed curve? The answer is the isoparametric inequality. Suppose we have a simple closed curve in the plane. And let L denote the length, A the enclosed area. Then we have uh, L squared is greater than or equal to 4 pi A. And the equality holds if and only if C is a circle. So. The um, smartest way is to enclose the, um, the land in a circular way. Let's go over the proof. Suppose C is given by the parametric equation. Then the length can be computed uh, using the standard formula. And by Green's theorem, the enclosed area can be also computed by a line integral, and which should uh, really be computed using uh, parametrization. Okay. So to, to establish the inequality, first we choose the parameter t equals 2 pi over l times s, where s is the arc length parameter. We know that um, this normalized the um, integral of um, integration as uh, 0 to pi. And we have the following relation. To, to see this, let's compute. We have dx dt equals dx ds times ds over dt, and we get l over 2 pi. And taking the square of it, using the fact that S is the arc length parameter, we, we get the identity. Therefore, L squared minus 4 pi A equals the um, 
the this integral. Okay? And we can complete the square to get um, the integrand is uh, dx plus dx dt plus y square plus um, the additional terms. Therefore, to establish the asymptotic inequality, we just have to show that the last two terms are non-negative. And this is guaranteed by the uh, Wertinger inequality. Let y be a smooth periodic function. Then, if it has integral 0, we will get the desired um, um, re result. And, we, and the equality holds if and only if a y is a linear combination of cosine and sine. We know that the assumption is, is met by a suitable translation of the, the curve. Suppose in, initially the curve lies here, then we translate it. They do not look. So, so that uh, the average of uh, its y coordinate is, is zero. Okay, so that for the equality case, once we know that y is a linear combination of cosine and sine, then uh, x is also a linear combination of sine and cosine. And from there, we know that uh, it's a circle. So this uh, finishes the proof of classical isoparametric inequality in, in the plane. Next, uh, let's study the relation of isoparametric inequality and other analytic inequalities. Okay. The first one is the Sobolev inequality in, in the plane. Let D be a plane domain. If f has compact support in D, then the square of the L1 norm of its gradient is greater than or equal to 4 pi times the um, square of its L2 norm. And we can show that the Sobolev inequality is equivalent to the isoparametric inequality. Uh, one direction is easy. Uh, we choose a smart test function. So given a domain D, we consider this function. Which is uh, 1 in most places and decreases to 0 toward the boundary. So the L2 norm of uh, F epsilon as uh, F epsilon is um, 1 in the most places, uh, it's a, the L2 norm approaches the area. On the other hand, the gradient is 0 except in a tuber neighborhood with value 1 over epsilon. So the integral of L1 of the gradient approach which uh, is the length of the boundary curve as epsilon goes to zero. So from here, we see that Sobolev inequality implies isoparametric inequality. For the other direction, we apply the isoparametric inequality to the level curves of a given function f. We let D of T be this, uh, the area of this uh, super level set, and CT be the length of the level set.
this is d of t c of t so if we it here and let a of t be the area of d of t and l of t be the length of c of t we also need the coarea formula so the double integral of a function h times a gradient f is equal to the iterated integral that we first integrate h along the level curve and then integrate from uh, 0 to infinity of t. We only need the simplest case h equals 1. So this uh, first equality is the core area formula and the isoparametric inequality gives the, the lower bound of the integral of L of t. So, so we know that the um, L1 norm of the gradient is bounded below by an integral of square root of A of t. On the other hand, we can compute the L2 norm of f by first integrate 2t from 0 to the absolute value of f, then integrate O over the, the region. And using Fubini theorem, we first integrate 1 over the uh, super level set and then integrate with respect to t. And this is another integral of uh, a of t. And some uh, non-trivial calculus using a of t is decreasing in t uh, yields the Sobolev inequality. The next related analytic inequality concerns Dirichlet eigenvalue. And the result is due to a Faber crown. Let lambda 1 be the smallest eigenvalue of the equation Laplace f plus lambda f equals 0 for solutions having zero boundary value. Then the lambda 1 of d is greater than that of the u unit disk if d has area pi. And the equality holds if and only if d equals b of 1. Okay. The interest of this um, theorem lies in the study of vibrations of homogeneous membranes. Suppose the homogeneous membrane has a shape of D. Okay. We know that the vibration is governed by the wave equation, uh, UTT equals that plus U. If we apply the um, separation of variable, setting uh, u equals e to the i lambda t f of x. Then, inserting it into the wave equation, we get minus lambda square t f x um, equals uh, e to i lambda t la plus f. Okay, so from here we, we see the relation of the eigenvalue with the so-called uh, frequency of the vibration. Therefore, um, the eigenvalue lambda 1 is usually called the fundamental tone of the membrane. Let's see the idea of proof. First, we have to know that the smallest eigenvalue can be characterized by the, the Rayleigh quotient. It is the inf uh, taken among all functions with compact support. 
of the quotient of the L2 norm of the gradient over the L2 norm. So this is uh, similar to Sobolev inequality, but now we consider the L2 norm of the gradient instead of the L1 norm. Next, we have to introduce the symmetrization. So U star is a radially symmetric function defined on the unit disk that has the same distribution as U. So, so that, um, for example, if we have a level set here, these two uh, super level sets have the same area. So we know that the L2 norm of U equals that of um, U star. And then isoparametric inequality is used to show that the L2 of the gradient for U is greater than that of U, U star. And uh, together with the characterization of lambda 1, that this completes the proof. And finally, let's look at the isoparametric inequality on surfaces. So uh, we all live on Earth, which is a sphere instead of a plane. Therefore, the problem of Dido is actually a problem on a curved surface, at least a, a sphere. Let's first guess uh, what kind of isoparametric inequality we should accept, is expect on a sphere. So we look at the um, spherical caps. A spherical cap in a sphere of radius r has uh, enclosed, has area given by, the, uh, the area and length given by the following formula. Let's see how, how these are derived. Oh, we have a um, spherical cap. In a sphere of radius r. We know that the area has this relation, okay, where ds is uh, this part. And we know that the S and the is longer than the H by the factor secant theta. On the other hand, from elementary geometry, we, we know that this theta is equal to the angle here. Therefore, r times secant theta is nothing but the radius of the sphere. And integrating this uh, identity, we, we get the area formula. And the boundary length is computed uh, easily. Okay. Some uh, manipulation yields that uh, L squared equals 4 pi A, but with the deficit A squared over R squared. Okay. So um, the curvature of sphere uh, penalizes this isoparametric inequality. And actually, 
on a sphere, we have the following isoparametric inequality. Indeed, L squared for any um, simple closed curve, its length is um, greater than its length squared is greater than four pi times the enclosed vol area with this the same deficit. And the inequality holds only for circles. More generally, we have the following Gromov's uh, isoparametric inequality. So suppose we have a closed n-dimensional Riemannian manifold whose uh, Ricci curvature is bounded below by the Ricci curvature of the n-dimensional uh, unit sphere. Then suppose we have a um, domain D in M and we compared with the uh, uh, model uh, B bar in n-dimensional sphere so that they have the same uh, volume ratio. Then the ratio of the um, volume of the boundary is greater than that of B bar in, in unit sphere. First, uh, we show that this theorem implies the um, isoparametric inequality on sphere by simply taking uh, m equals s2. So if m equals s2, then the above, in the above assumption and conclusion, we can cancel out the denominator. Therefore, and the assumption on the ratio lower bound is uh, trivial, uh, trivially holds because m is just s2 itself. So we have, um, suppose we have a here and this. Then l square is um, greater than that of boundary B bar. And we have this is equal to uh, 4 pi uh, A of B bar minus A of B bar square over R square. But B and B bar have the same area. So this becomes 4 pi A minus A square over R square. So Gromov's uh, isoparametric inequality implies the isoparametric inequality on two spheres. And, uh, let, me, let me sketch the, the proof of Gromov's isoparametric inequality. First, we assume that the infimum is attained and by a domain with smooth boundary. So here, uh, the non-trivial fact is attained and smooth. Under this assumption, then the boundary sigma has a constant mean curvature eta. Next, Jacobi field analysis uh, or hence culture um, inequality implies that the volume of D is bounded from above by the volume of sigma times this um, integral, where this r is the first zero of cosine t minus eta sine t. And this uh, integral is nothing but the ratio of the volume of um, uh, spherical cap with radius r over it's the, the volume of its boundary in, in the um, um, unit sphere. And we denote this ratio by 1 over A of R. Now, the key is that D is uh, closed, so we can apply the same reasoning for the complement of D, where so D here, and we 
applied component of it. Now, sigma is again the boundary of the component of D, but with mean curvature negative eta. Okay. So we get another um, inequality relating the volume of uh, component of D and volume of sigma. Putting these two together, we know that uh, volume of sigma is greater than the maximum of the, these two. And in particular, it's greater than the inth of volume D times A of T, where T is taken for all um, P between 0 and pi. And this inth is achieved for the T naught so that the two elements are the, the same. Okay, so now using this re relation and some direct computation can complete the proof. Finally, let's turn to our in initial assumption. The existence of minimizer is okay and follows from the geometric measure theory. But the theory implies that the boundary may be singular in uh, higher dimensions. So Wormov uh, uses a deep result of Armgren to show that every point in D can be reached by a geodesic emanating from a regular point. Okay. So the singular set doesn't affect the um, Hence, culture inequality, and this so so it doesn't affect the proof. Let me make some uh, remark. In general, the isoparametric problem on surfaces with variable curvature is difficult. The standard calculus of variations argument still applies, and we know that a smooth critical point of the isoparametric problem must have constant geodesic curvature. But the German mathematician Erhard Schmidt constructed surfaces with no simple closed curve of constant geodesic curvature. Okay. So this problem can be settled. Oh, by, by the way, here, by no simple closed curve of constant geodesic curvature, I mean non-zero geodesic curvature, uh, as uh, all closed surfaces admit closed geodesics. Uh, another isoparametric inequality that interested uh, people is the case of uh, minimal surfaces. We call that a minimal surface is a critical point of the area functional. Equivalently, a minimal surface has zero mean curvature. In 1921, Kalman, using complex analysis and uh, Weierstrass representation for minimal surface, showed that for a simply connected domain on a minimal surface, uh, the classical isoparametric inequality holds L squared is greater than 4 pi A. He conjectured that the topological restriction is not necessary. On the other hand, uh, we have a heuristic uh, argument showing why one expects the isoparametric inequality to hold on minimal surfaces. In fact, the argument applies to area minimizing surfaces. So suppose we have um, area minimizing uh, surface in R3. So suppose we can find a point in R3, so that the cone based on this point and span by the boundary of sigma can be flattened onto the plane.
In other words, we can isoparametric embed this cone on, onto plane. Then we can apply, we can use the isoparametric inequality on this uh, flattened cone. So we get L squared is greater than or equal to 4 pi the area of the cone. And since sigma is area minimizing and the cone has the same boundary as sigma, we get the area of cone is greater than the area of sigma. And the boundary curve have, have curves have the same uh, length, so we get uh, L square is greater than or equal to 4 pi times A of sigma. Okay. But uh, to my knowledge, um, this heuristic argument is never made uh, rigorous. However, the conjecture is resolved by uh, Simon Brando in 2019. So the classical isoparametric inequality holds for a minimal submanifold of co-dimension at most two. Okay. So not only a minimal surface in R3, Brando can treat a submanifold of arbitrary dimension and co-dimension at most two. And the equality holds only for flat disks. So let me uh, stop here for my first lecture.